Right, so, Grant Shapps, you might have heard on the news today the little spiv has been moved again in a mini reshuffling government where outgoing Tory MP Ben Wallace, who's stepping down from Parliament at the next election, has been stepped down from his Defence Secretary brief, heading back to the back benches for the remainder of his tenure, however long that's going to be. And so Shapps has now taken over his post. This is Shapps' fifth move in 12 months, so, so it doesn't say a lot for his uh, sticking time or how he gets on with people in various departments. A, his time frame appears to be a litany of annoying people, in large part to the point he's had to be moved, or so it would seem. From transport, where he went to war on the rail unions over paying conditions, to Home Secretary for all of a week under Liz the Lettuce Trust, to Business and Energy, where he basically went back to attacking the rail unions again, to energy security and net zero, and now to defence. But it's his last stop at energy that is where this story arises, because he's only just getting his feet under the defence desk today, after all. But it's uh, it's that energy security and net zero business where Shap's favoured oil and gas over renewables, as we know. After all, he did say he wanted to max out the North Sea, and the fossil fuel lobby are happy to wine and dine and donate to get their way, despite renewable energy being 11 times cheaper to produce than those fossil fuel industries, just as a for instance. And those fossil fuel industries take years longer to become economically productive when they settle upon a new site. Not only is it more environmentally harmful, there's no common sense to it financially either. However, over the last couple of years, the Tories have got a little bit excited about hydrogen as a fuel. Now, hydrogen is produced by passing electricity through water, splitting it into hydrogen and carbon dioxide as that process does. Clean methods of creating hydrogen, therefore, involved sequestering the carbon dioxide underground, but dirtier methods put it into the atmosphere. So there is a bit of a grey area with regards to how clean hydrogen production is. A further question on this is how green is the electricity you're using to pass through the water to begin with? Is it coming from renewables or not? Is it the fossil fuel lobby again? Uh, or fossil fuel industry even. So clearly there's work that can be done on producing it. But once you have it, it's pretty clean stuff to use. Using it in fuel cells for cars and buses, as they already do in Japan, for example, to heat our homes and even in heavy industry like steel manufacture, it's an option. The byproduct of burning the hydrogen fuel once you've got it, given that the hydrogen will just bond with oxygen in the air as it gets used, is just plain water. If water is the only byproduct at the end of it, it's not a pollutant, is it? Happy days. Is it cheaper, though? Well, Grant Shapps and the Tories would like you to think so. If the government were prepared to add what was called a hydrogen levy to your energy bills. Way to convince us all that going green is the way to go if it was going to cost us more, wasn't it? Comes back to how the stuff is produced again. There is work to be done to get production prices down, especially as the government wants to double hydrogen production. And because of that, it has to be subsidised right now to the tune of three and a half billion pounds a year. Why this can't be offset by, oh, I don't know, removing subsidies from the oil and gas companies who don't need it, I don't really know. But as I said before, they're a powerful lobby, and this hydrogen business might be putting them out of business, as I said at the start. But Shaps is quite fond of pleasing them, so I find it hard to believe that would happen. So to pay for this, there was going to be this hydrogen levy. It would have added another £118 a year onto average energy bills. Still too high as they are, and of course, we can't afford them to go up even more. It's not fair. Going green is the right thing to do, but we can't afford to be even poorer if you're going to do it. So prior to getting reshuffled to defence, Shapps announced the levy was being scrapped. Cure PR victory for the government. All the media love this. Cutting bills, even though actually they haven't changed them whatsoever. So how is he paying for the subsidy now then, Damo? Well, he's going to apparently levy a tax on gas shipping companies to cover it now instead. Nice idea. But it won't work. What happens when you dump additional costs on a retailer? They put their prices up to cover it, don't they? What happens when a buy-to-let landlord's mortgage rises? Well, they pass the cost on to the tenants, don't they? So who will the gas shipping companies pass their costs on to then? They're bringing gas to us, after all. We're not exporting the stuff. We still need natural gas currently to heat our homes. So, oh, look, it's going to end up on our energy bills anyway, then, isn't it? They'll deliver the gas, pass on their extra cost to the suppliers, and they'll then recoup their costs, their, their higher costs, from us, just like they did last time. Our bills still rise. So I looked at this story and I'm reminded of what a fossil fuel fanboy Shaps is. And well, I'm thinking to myself, well, these shipping companies that deliver us natural gas, nice excuse to high prices they've been given, costs that actually 
should never have been levied against our bills since hydrogen production in this country is primarily being used in industry rather than domestically right now. Why not levy it on business bills, which would be more appropriate? Do the Tories actually look at us as anything but ever poor cash cows that they can constantly whack in the bills? It's also not doing the reputation of going green any good when some media, the Green Party, people like me, gobbing off on video for your edutainment of saying renewable cleaner energy is cheaper and here's Shaps pulling off nothing but a PR stunt implying he saved you money when all he's done is shuffle the costs up the supply chain and your bills are going to rise anyway by association. To my mind, this shouldn't be going on bills at all. It's, it's nothing to do with that. This is an R&D issue, isn't it? This is research and development, surely. We should be looking into how to clean up the production costs of hydrogen so we're not releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, so we're not using fossil fuel generated electricity to produce it, and greater investigation into what is called carbon sequestration, burying the stuff essentially, locking it up in soil or in water, and this requires investment more generally, not something to be levied against our energy bills, whether obviously as in the hydrogen levy, or by stealth as Shaps sticks attacks on shipping that will still end up passed on to us in the end anyway. Ensure renewable energy is more heavily invested in, brought online faster. Ensure this is driving hydrogen production to power our industry, our transport, and eventually our homes, and we become less reliant on a polluting, insecure resource such as oil and gas, which is finite and running out. This research should be paid for out of the public purse. General taxation offset that spending, preferably against oil and gas giants. Well, that wealth tax that neither the Tories or Starmer's Labour believe in wouldn't hurt at all either, would it? Once again, all of it comes down to a matter of political choice, and these are the choices that they're making. As always, the Tory choice is to make ordinary families pay more. And all that does in turn is make increasingly hard-up people turn against the very things they're being made to pay for. And when it's something like protecting the environment, that should never be the case. When Shaps had the nerve to attack Ulez, for example, for hitting people unfairly in the pocket, yet he's gone along and done something like this that will also hit us indirectly, invisibly, in the pocket too. It's playing politics. It's playing politics 101. The hypocrisy is stunning and needs exposing, and nobody is ultimately a winner here, save for the oil and gas industry and their lobbyists. What do you think? Do you think Shaps' addiction to oil and gas or... Uh, the, the leanings of the oil and gas lobby on him is driving some kind of agenda against green energy within the government here. Is he trying to put people off it by ensuring it is costing them more? Or perhaps you think this is perfectly reasonable if the environment benefits by less carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases going into the atmosphere. And it's a price worth paying and we need to accept that it will cost us more. I don't agree with that personally, but I mean, you might. Let me know in the comments below. Justify it. Join in the conversation on this. Have a chat. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did more content as ever out daily. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation for you where Rishi Sunak's now ended windfall tax on those oil and gas giants was a big fat massive con that carried on lining their pockets anyway, as it turned out again, reinforcing my belief that there's nothing altruistic in any of this coming from the Tories now. And I'll hopefully see you on the next video. Cheers, folks.